A lot of students wonder how long it's going to take them in order to be able to actually play the piano. And whether you've been playing piano for years, or whether you're just starting on your piano journey, or maybe you're just thinking about getting started with playing the piano, there are a lot of different factors that go into answering this question. And if you stick around until the very end, I will share my opinion on this question and why it's maybe not the best question that you can be asking in the first place. But first, let's talk about seven different things you can work on that will help you speed up your progress at the piano and help you reach your goals faster. First and foremost, you have to be showing up consistently. If you're kind of a hit or miss practicer, if you practice just in a really long block every now and then, right before your lessons, under pressure, things like that, it's just going to take you so much longer to be able to really sit down and feel comfortable at the piano, which is what we want for you. It's not enough to say, okay, now I'm going to practice consistently, I'm a brand new person, I'm going to change my habits. You need to plan for this. It doesn't happen by accident. Life is busy, things get in the way, and I want you to first schedule your practice sessions and know when you reliably have time and have a backup plan for what you're going to do if something happens in your day that for whatever reason you're not able to show up for your regular practice session. There are a lot of different ways that you can go about making this happen. There are all sorts of resources on YouTube that can help you plan your day and manage your time and work in time. I don't like to use the phrase find time because time is very sneaky and likes to hide. But showing up consistently is without a doubt the most important factor in making progress at the piano. Step two is learning quality practice techniques. There is practicing and then there is practicing. And there are a lot of different things that we can do when we sit down to the piano and we have to learn ways to manage our time and what gets us the most for our time and, and how to really work around all of those things. If you have a teacher, absolutely be asking questions about how can I practice, how can I work on this specific passage, how can I be spending my time, what are different practice techniques that I can use. In general, rule of thumb is don't try to do an entire piece all at once. We have to practice performing, but that's practicing performing. That's not practicing learning a piece. So do be practicing your pieces in chunks looking at things hands separately when you need to, really honing in on fingerings and making sure that you know exactly which finger you want early on in the game. And those few things, if you take nothing else away from this video, that will win you so much time and, and help you get so much more done with the time that you have at the piano. Step three, maybe sounds a little bit strange at first, but hear me out. Step three is to really get comfortable at the piano. And I mean this in a few ways. I mean getting comfortable with the motions that you need at the piano, really thinking a little bit about technique. We can also overdo it on technique, so I do say this with a grain of salt, but if we learn the ways that we can move our bodies at the piano so that it's more comfortable just physically when we're playing, that's really important. And then on the other hand, I just mean get comfortable at the keys, moving around, you know exactly where you are at any given moment, and you're not having to stop and think, okay, where's this key, where's that key? And in yet another sense, I also mean do, I would encourage you to do a little bit of improvisation. This is something that I am working on practicing what I preach. I have been toying around with this recently also, that when you sit down at the piano, you don't have to always play from sheet music and according to the plan of some other composer. You are a musical person and you want to express yourself at the piano and you are absolutely free to sit down and just play whatever feels good to you, whatever you want. I have a couple of improvisation exercises. If you're interested in checking those out, I have a 14-day challenge. I'll link to it somewhere around here. And do give that a look if you're interested in toying around with that idea a little bit. The next two steps are maybe not going to be the most popular of all of these seven. However, they are incredibly important. So step 
four is that you need to be dedicating consistent time to reading music. And of course, you're probably learning pieces and using sheet music to do that, but what I need is actually a little bit different. I want you to be taking pieces that are perhaps a little bit below the level that you're currently playing at and just sit down and read through it. These don't have to be particularly interesting pieces. You can just buy a random book. You can use children's books that help you, that are nice to use in a way because they're, they're structured by level. And so you can just work, start at level one and work your way up and see your reading skills improving as you work through that. Or if you have a composer or a singer that you really like, if you really like ABBA, then, then find a book of really simple arrangements of ABBA music and sit down and do that. Or right now, in the time that I'm filming this, we're coming up to the Christmas season. If you want to buy yourself a, a book of Christmas music, that's also a great way to just get a little bit more practice reading at the piano. Okay, Robin, great, reading music is important, I know, but how is that going to make me progress faster at the piano? We just tend to be able to digest a larger amount of music when we're taking it from sheet music. So the better you're able to read music, the more music you're able to learn in general, and that's just going to help you make progress faster in the long run. You're going to be able to consume more, which means that you're going to be able to produce more, and that is one of the most important things that has really taken my personal playing to the next level is being able to get through, to work through a certain amount of music in a certain amount of time. Tip number five, and this is a little bit interesting because if you said, oh no, I'm not reading sheet music, I don't want to read sheet music, then you're probably actually going to be kind of happy with this tip and vice versa. If you said, yeah, reading music, I love reading music, of course I want to be spending more time reading music then this might not hit very close to home for you. But the next thing I want you to be working on is regularly memorizing your music. Why? Because when we memorize music, it belongs to us. It becomes part of you. It's not just something that lives on a piece of paper that you have access to. When you have that piece of paper in front of you, you are internalizing the music. And we know the music on such a deeper level and we have it from memory just because we've gone through a more intensive process of learning the music and of acquiring that. And it again, it just becomes part of you. The more we work on this, the more music becomes a part of us and who we are and you're able to sit down and just play. And that is priceless. That is such an incredible thing to be able to give to yourself. So. If you're not so hot on memorizing, don't start and say, okay, I have to learn all of my music from memory today. Choose maybe just one phrase, and you're going to memorize that phrase and get really comfortable playing that phrase by memory. And then, okay, that wasn't so bad, now I can do the next phrase. And do that until you've memorized one small piece or one movement, and then you can expand on that. Don't try to go from zero to 60 if it's not something that you've been working on. But I do encourage you to make memorizing music a regular part of your practice routine. Tip number six is a little bit counterintuitive. And this is something that my high school teacher used to tell me all the time. She used to tell me, slow practice, fast progress. And I did not understand what she meant when I was 16. I didn't want to practice slow. I wanted to have my pieces ready now. And that's just not how it works. It is this really strange phenomenon that if you put concentrated slow practice in, you're going to master your pieces so much faster because you've developed awareness. You're not trying to just muscle through with muscle memory. That is an important part of playing, but it's not enough. We also need this conscious awareness of what we're doing and really actively engaging with the music as we're learning it. And I can promise you from personal experience that if you spend just a little bit of time practicing really, truly slowly, slower than you probably think you need to go. It's going to take you much fewer repetitions because you're going to be so aware of every single thing that you're practicing in the moment. 
and it kind of takes away this element of overwhelm and I guarantee that you're going to be making faster progress if you dedicate at least a part of your practice time to really working through elements slowly. Last but certainly not least, tip number seven is to remember your why. Why did you want to start playing piano in the first place? Why did you decide that you want to learn a certain piece? What are you working for? Did you, did you, do you want to be able to sit down and just express yourself with the piano? Then enjoy that, lean into that. You don't have to be playing the most advanced music to, to really truly express yourself. You don't have to be playing the most advanced music to enjoy the process of playing. Remember why you wanted to play the piano and really hold on to that. Hold that near, keep that present. Remind yourself from time to time. When we're learning to play piano, it's a level of mastery that we don't have comparison to with a lot of other things. It's not like reading a book. You read a book and you're done. You already speak your native language and you read the book in that language and it's a very simple process. You learn a lot, you enjoy the book, that's all wonderful, but piano is a much more complex skill. It's totally worth all of the time that you're spending, but don't lose sight of that why. If you find yourself getting frustrated, if you find yourself feeling like it's taking you too long, and I use quotation marks because we'll come to that in just a second, but if you feel like it's taking you too long to be able to really play the piano, then stop and think about why you started in the first place. And I think you'll find some things that you can reincorporate into your practice routines that will help you enjoy the process a lot more. So at the beginning, I promise you that I was going to answer why I don't think this is a great question in general. How long is it going to take me to play the piano? I understand the question, I understand the motivation. There are certain pieces that you want to be able to play, there's a certain level of mastery that you want to feel when you sit down at the piano and, and not have to worry so much about mechanical things or rhythm things or whatever the case may be. I get it. but. Learning to play the piano is not a sprint, it's really not even a marathon, it's a journey, it's a process, it's a chance for you to sit down at the instrument and just go into a whole other universe. You go into your musical bubble, you can turn off your worries from the day, you can just sit and enjoy the music and enjoy the process. And there's no expiration date on that. If it takes you a year to play one of the pieces that you really wanted to play, cool. If it takes you 10 years, that's also great. But try to enjoy every step along the journey because it's not just about being able to play one piece that made you decide you want to play the piano. Of course, that should be celebrated when you manage that and, and to really celebrate that you accomplished a goal, but Making music a part of our lives is so much bigger than that. So I hope these seven tips help you. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, if you have any suggestions, if you have any words of wisdom for your fellow piano students. Um, share that with all of us down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, happy practice.